With the way that the world is going right now and the shifts that are happening within humans, within spiritual beings having a human experience, what I've noticed with my clients, with people talking online, uh, just the general conversation is that there is an influx of interest in community living. I myself have landed in community living here in Italy. Uh, I live in my van, if you don't know, I live on a horse farm in Italy and in my van that doesn't currently drive, but it should drive by like tomorrow. <laughs> uh, I think we did discover the issue with it. It seems like it was a fluid issue plus there's like a little robot thing that shifts the gears for me because it is an automatic, but it's a 2005. And so it's a very special van, what people have said. And so in other news, <laughs> before we get into this video, I've been downloaded with one of those ideas that is just, it is so strong. It is so life altering. It is so, um, so big. And so it's very interesting because this time, one, one year ago, is when I was getting ready to move here to Europe. And I moved on Halloween. And on Halloween, a few years before that, I moved to Mexico on a boat. Uh, I was working and living on a yacht. And so it seems like this time of year is always a very consistent, big, life-changing thing type of month and specifically day. So we'll see if this happens on Halloween as well. Uh, I found this double-decker bus here in Italy and I want to get it. <laughs> I was looking at selling my van now that it's going to be fixed and just doing something different like maybe a new van, maybe an RV, maybe because RVs are just so much more common here than in the States, at least for young people. And then I realized by talking to a conscious friend of mine who came here, I was like, why does it matter? Like it's, I like it, right? I can make it nice and beautiful inside, but it's built for a living and I won't have as many of the issues as I had with my van. I fixed up my van to a really good spot, but when I got it, there was electrical issue, electrical issue. There was water issue there was or like a uh well a leak mold there was an issue with charging the battery there was there were all these different issues and so i was able to fix that with the help of my friends and family and so now i'm like okay i found this double decker bus it is so cool and it could be really really cool it could be something so special to build for myself and so the thing why i'm like having such a hard time not hard time but why i'm taking this seriously is because it's life altering in the way that what am i saying the right word altering <laughs> alterating <laughs> altering and i can convert it pretty much into a little house and it could have multiple rooms it can have a yoga studio it can have a office yoga studio chill room like i'll have a space for guests to come visit me it'll be nice and light and bright i can have a full kitchen a full shower and bathroom and everything a nice big closet like of course it's not like a mansion i'm jokingly calling it the palace because it's so much bigger than the van that i currently have right now and i have been going down the rabbit hole of um Andrum, I, I cannot say this word even, I don't, I don't know how to say it. One of you commented on one of my videos recently and said, you must be a Andra blah, 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 starseed. It's a specific kind of starseed. And I kind of checked out, I always check out when something becomes really hyped and everyone starts getting obsessed with something. So it's like with Taylor Swift albums and all these things, whenever people go crazy for something, I'm just like, naturally, I've always been like, no like turn away. And so when people were going crazy about being star seeds for a while, like during COVID time, I kind of turned away from it because I had learned about it many years ago because my mom had recommended a book and comment below if you want to know the book, I will find it. It is on my iPad that is ancient, but it talked about how, you know, we came from other places. We came to earth for a specific reason. And so I was called to look up this specific star seed and 
it was very much in alignment with me, like every single trait that there was, uh, was something that I feel. And a lot of it is being a nomad and living off grid and doing, you know, very technical stuff, not, not very technical stuff, but like being, you know, involved in the online community. And, um, so it makes sense like doing YouTube and having e-commerce businesses, uh, and all these different things. And so I feel spicy diva <laughs> and wins. Wentz was part of the fundraiser that you guys helped me with. And so he gets to live his life here being a spicy little wannabe stallion. But the idea of converting this double-decker bus into a home while learning that information. I'm going to just sit in this horse poop. <laughs> well, this is dirt. It's dirt. She's hay that's gotten through a horse's body. Uh... The idea of building this little home on wheels suits me and I feel even more inclined to accept that part of myself because I had been intuitively guided to and been able to have the opportunity of had this, having this mirrored to me by one of you, thank you, uh, by learning about this, whether I am the starseed or not, allowing myself to have that experience of listening to someone else talk about and acknowledge that certain types of spiritual beings having this human experience are this type of person. I was like, oh, okay, it's okay that I'm living more of an unconventional life. It's okay that, you know, my friends and family back home don't really get it. And there's most of them, not all of them, most of them are very, very supportive of it. And it doesn't matter, even if no one was, it does not matter. You, what's most important right now is to trust yourself and to know that what you're called to doing and living and being and experiencing, that's meant for you. No one else has to understand. But it, it also, it does help <laughs> when they do, of course it does. And so for going, by going through this experience and finding the bus and then having these intense downloads, um, I shared it with the, the two farm owners here. I was like, what do you guys think? Like, it's kind of a big bus. I don't want it to be an eyesore. And they were both like, you have to get it. Like, we would be so jealous. You have to get it. And so to have that full support of the community that I live with, I was like, wow, okay, maybe I will go get it. And everyone here who, a lot of my friends here are really excited about helping me renovate it. And of course it will be a long project. It will take time. Uh, it's something that I know I will be very proud of when I look back on my life. And so that was something that came to my mind uh, very, very presently, or I don't know the word, but a year ago when I was like, what will I be most proud of when I look back on my life for? And it was making this big decision to sell all my things, move to another country, and just figure it out because that's what I was being called to do. And then it ended up with me being divinely guided to this community living, to this living with these animals, to saving these horses. This is Guapa here, and so she was also one of the fundraiser horses. Hi, pretty girl. You wanna come say hi? Go step on me. Hi, honey. She's such an angel. Hi, babe. Oh. And so we want to talk about community living today. So what I've noticed with a lot of conscious people who come here is they're talking about community living and that, you know, as the world is changing and all these new things are being enforced, like, so I just love this horse. Hi. All these new things also, sorry so many distractions rudy the the donkey who identifies as a horse hi babe there are a lot of things going on on earth right now uh, a lot of changes that could happen that end up changing the way that we live our life the freedom that we have in our life and rudy no and it could happen it could not happen it's definitely a discussion which you know, we've seen it in action with the the thing that happened a few years ago where we all were experiencing a, a certain 
amount of control from those above. And so that could definitely happen soon. I, I feel that that was a tester, a test round for what's to come. And so especially when you're in these more city type areas, it will probably end up being this situation where, you know, you're limited on how far you can drive. You're limited on um, just things that you can do. There's going to be maybe a more controlled source of income for all. Sir, do you like this topic? It's kind of leading to you. So then, you know, the, the other option is to be in more rural areas where, you know, you're in the countryside and you're not as controlled, but you also don't have as many resources being handed to you. Sir, give me some space. Um, and what comes with that is that you will need to learn how to be resourceful yourself. You will need to learn how to, you know, gather your own water and how to make, grow your own food and how to be more self-sufficient and, you know, maybe use solar, uh, maybe catch rainwater, maybe have a well, but also being able to build, being able to, <laughs> hi monkey, just being able to survive on your own without things being handed to you uh, in exchange for, you know, this whatever kind of compensation and the benefits. It's the same thing as having these nine to five jobs where, you know, so much is handed to you, but you also are selling your soul, you're selling your freedom, you are selling the amount of time that you get with your family and friends. And some people are completely fine with that. And that's great Then I encourage people to go down that path and to live that path. And I know many people who are all about it and that's wonderful. It must be really nice <laughs> to be able to do that, but I personally can't. And maybe if you're here right now, you personally can't either. And so what's so wonderful about community living, especially in these more off-grid areas or these more rural areas, like we're not completely off-grid, but the, the goal is to eventually be pretty self-sustaining. Um, Thank you for those kisses. <laughs> and hello, my next visitor. This one is Solomon or Halo. This is Halo. <laughs> um, and so in community living, right, people, there will be people who have different things that they can bring to the table. Some people will be good at painting. Some people will be good at, um, uh, music some people will be good at wellness stuff some people will be good at building some people will be good at mechanics some people will be good at just being really resourceful or being a really good mediator and bringing the peace oh no that was solomon <laughs> um and so we get to experience that here on this farm and in this community it's like so there's so much diversity, especially being here in Europe with so many different countries nearby. We have so many different cultures and languages and we all speak English together, but we bring so much to the table, which creates this very unique environment where, you know, there's always something to learn, always ways to grow. And even though we're far away from a lot, we are also like, we don't need much. We're kind of like our own world here. And I feel very comfortable and confident in the fact that if the world were to go to shit again, <laughs> then we would have this. We would have each other. We would have our, our knowledge and our capability of being resourceful and living off the land and figuring it out. And we have good community even around us because like our, the village here is very small. Sir, I don't want nibbles, okay? I've missed you too. You've been so busy being a horse. <laughs> oh, and Lex the pony. So I mentioned Lex the other day and he was part of, he's from the same owner of the ones that we rescued in that fundraiser. And he was supposed to go to a home and seemed to have enough value to go to a place instead of the meat slaughter. That's why he wasn't part of the, the fundraiser. But we did send him away to go like have this test round thing with a place that um, has training and stuff with horses. And they bought the other horse that went with him. But Lex kept kicking everybody off. And 
he had this really nice soul connection with one of our volunteers who just left the other day and never kicked her off. They were like buddies, like so perfect. My dude, you're being rude. And so the owner is getting out of jail soon and is going to take Lex back. And if he can't be bought by anybody because he literally kicks off every single other rider that has ever tried to be on him, then, you know, that owner has a tendency to send horses to the meat slaughter. So the girl who came here who had that really special connection with him is starting a fundraiser for him. And I will share that soon. So hopefully we can save Lex and he can live here forever. And she's planning to come back and live here and, you know, be with Lex all the time and ride him and give him a wonderful life because they were obviously meant for each other. So that's the thing is like, we keep getting people from all over the world who find their place here, who find their soul calling here and who make this the, the ecosystem that it needs to be. And for some reason, all these spiritually awake people as well, like the, I wouldn't say here, like the general theme is consciousness or spirituality or anything. And there are some that are like that. But my concern with some like that is that sometimes they get a little culty. Uh, I think that there's probably really beautiful ones too, but I, I like having the diversity of humans and interests and animals. <laughs> and, um, and so all these people who are starting to at least just get more tapped in with what they want out of life, whether, you know, they're spiritual or politically incl or uh, interested or whatever, we're just getting these downloads, right? The way that I'm getting this download for the bus, this download, like, what would it be like community living? I personally had no idea that community living was such a thing that, you know, people were making all these off-grid places in like South and Central America and Portugal. Italy, I don't think is so common, but it's nice having this here. And so there are ways to find community living. Um, I would say Facebook is probably like the best right now. Uh, there's a lot of work away options. I honestly, I'm not really the person to know or give this information because I wasn't actually searching for it. But from what I've heard, Facebook groups are the best work aways and volunteering and woofing maybe would show you where some communities are. And typically it's like, it's volunteer work in exchange for a place to live, right? And so you maybe do like two or three hours a day, five days a week, um, and then you get to live and be a part of a community. And maybe there's other systems out there too, like that are designed differently. So that's just kind of how we do it here. And the benefit is that you, like what I always, found with being in romantic relationship and what I work with people on in there in my client sessions is your partner and whoever else you spend like you have a really close relationship with they're your mirror right they're mirroring all these parts of yourself and so when these conflicts come up which trust me there are quite a few that come up in community living they the way that you are reacting the way that you are getting triggered those are all things that are within you that are you're bringing out within the group within others for your own perceived reality so you can see what's resonating within you Stop. and and you can go deeper in your healing so it's an opportunity to heal to grow to expand to love to accept to find your purpose and so that's kind of like maybe the last thing that i'll touch on right now is bro i don't want you to bite me it hurts when you bite me. I would like to request that you stop. I'll give you pets. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the cuddles, even though they're a little aggressive. Okay, fucking donkeys. <laughs> My dude, what do you want from me? You wanna talk about community living? Are you having an issue? Am I triggering parts of you so that you then trigger parts of me and we're just in this healing cycle together? We can figure it out later. <laughs> um, the other part is finding your purpose. And so what 
I've talked with the farm owner here about and noticed as well in myself and in others is that people will often come here and they will find their purpose. Like this, this new volunteer that we had who came here and is finding this purpose of, you know, maybe doing fundraisers. And that was something similar to me is like doing that fundraiser for those five horses. I was like, wow, this lights something up in me, like saving animals from horrible situations or horrible outcomes or going to a meat slaughter, you know, that's something I'm super, super passionate about. Uh, for me, finding, you know, my, my potential future of starting, which sounds pretty clear, of starting this retreat center here and this wellness center and, and finding that within this community. And we've been doing yoga classes recently and I've been teaching them and sound baths and things like that. And so that's been so special. Other people have found, you know, that they're really good at managing or that they're really good at, you know, specifically leading trails or um, building fences and working with wood. We have another guy who came here who we're working on getting a volunteer visa for because he's so good at building wood things and he's going to make really beautiful wood things and sell them and have his own little business here. And so there's so many wonderful things that can come from this type of environment you can really start to find yourself in it if it's the right environment if it's you know led by someone who accepts you for who you are and encourages you to find your truth and so i really do give props to the farm owner here for doing that and the art of community is a book that one of my friends who was volunteering here recommended and it talks about that it talks about you know you're a product of of the leader of your community and I need to read the book. I don't know anything else about it, but you really, if you are in that environment where someone encourages you to discover your own strengths and your own weaknesses, then it can be such a wonderful and magical experience. And it's so different, right? It challenges community living. This is another thing. It challenges, let's make sure we're still recording. Wow, we've been going for a while. It challenges a lot of your subconscious beliefs and patterns about how life should be. We're, you know, told that we need to get the job so that we can pay rent and then we have to get the car and then we have insurance and then we have gas and we have utilities for our place that we rent and then eventually we're going to buy a place and then we're going to have a mortgage and then we're going to have all this stuff. And so by making life simple and you know a lot of people most people here live in their van um and don't have any expenses other than you know whatever else they got going on uh behind the scenes they get to you know do this exchange of working and volunteering and helping the community and the vision of the community and in this case the animals and you know where the farm is going in the direction of like starting these uh trail rides and helping with building this wellness center and the different things that will produce money so that we can then put the money back into taking care of the animals. Uh, so that's the mission of this community. But yeah, so in exchange for your, your time for a few hours a day, you get to not have to worry about so many of the things that keep us stuck in a life and a timeline where we feel restricted. I had a beautiful home that I lived in. I had a beautiful, I mean, I loved my car. It wasn't anything super fancy. Uh, I had beautiful friends, I had beautiful, you know, everything, walks that I would go on, all these things, but it still wasn't fulfilling me. It wasn't where I wanted to be. And when I was finally like, okay, I'm just gonna step into the unknown and see what's there, it all started to fall into place. I came to Europe for the first three months. I was very, very homesick. I shared that on this channel. I started this channel this year, in the beginning of the year, um, and I was so homesick. I was like, I, I might have to go home. Like, I don't have any friends. Like, traveling's cool, but it's not as cool when you're just on your own with your dog, which I love, but I was like, I miss my community. And then I landed here, and then I, I kind of went against my own intuition, was like, I'm gonna go and travel, and maybe I'll come back here like in the spring. And then divine intervention brought me back here. We were all there together in that experience in Austria and how it brought me back here. And then we did the fundraiser and I rescued the horses with you guys and with the, with the help of the team on that second fundraiser. And then, you know, baby chaos 
it became a result of it and ladybug's baby and so then i have a horse coming in the spring and there's just so much now happening here and so that's the other part of this double decker bus is like i was really and this is going to be a whole other video maybe tomorrow I was really sitting down with myself. I was like, how do I make this decision? Like making big decisions can be tough. And I think that's really needs to be its own video. And how do we make big decisions from a soul aligned place? And so I was checking with myself intuitively in my heart, seeing what it said. And then I was asking myself like, what are my most, my top priorities right now? And my number one priority, and it's shown in my astrology as well, is to have soul fulfilling work, to pursue my soul calling. And so in, in a way, that's like my career, like my, the, the work, it's, I don't, I don't want to call it work because we always talk about it. It's, I don't really feel like I'm working. It's like I'm following something and I'm creating like what I feel called to create. And so having more space, um, especially space that I design and that I'm inspired by, I feel like will be very supportive of that. And I asked myself, like, is this where I want to be? for the next however many years because it's probably going to take a while to convert this and then I'm going to want to enjoy it and I do see myself being here for quite a while uh, especially you know with chaos being born soon with the retreat center with the wellness center all these things so everything everything is so fascinating <laughs> and I I hope that if you are feeling called to something similar to community living that this video supported you and giving some perspective from someone who is currently in community living and who you know we're we're move, moving a little bit towards or towards not just a little bit we're, we're moving towards being mostly off-grid and it's a very nice time in the world to consider that so with all that being said if you like this video please give it a thumbs up subscribe if you are new here leave a comment if you feel called to do so if you don't know what to say you can say hello to Lex. Hopefully we rescue him. Lex the pony. And uh, if you want to sign up for one of my programs, I have 21 days to know your divine guidance, 21 days to rewire your mind. You can read about them if you click on them below. I also have one-on-one -on -one options right now, which I think I won't for long. I might be changing up my calendar. Uh, so I might be primarily focusing on my programs because I do have this 12-week intensive course coming out soon which i'm so excited about and it will be everything about finding your your soul calling going for it rewiring your mind knowing your your divine guidance like everything and more all in this one course so that in the end of the 12 weeks you can truly expect to be in a completely different timeline so with all that being said i'll see you guys tomorrow bye